Remember, sound. We're now broadcasting, guys. I'm the sustainability manager with the city of Miami Beach, and we also have Yanni with us. Yanni, say hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm Yanni Pineda, the senior sustainability coordinator with the city. Thanks. And Yanni is in the clouds today. She yes. figure out what the cloud is to us. She'll figure out where all, all your information goes to. Yes. <laughs> I, I can. Yeah, it must be a really exciting place. <laughs> Awesome, guys. As we have a lot of folks joining us today, we are going to start warming up the chat. So today we are going to be talking about communications. I'm super excited because I feel like presentations are already hard. And now in this new virtual world, you know, presenting became a little bit more complicated. Um, so we'll be talking a lot about that. We have our experts here. And let's start with the chat. So we want to hear from you guys. Yanni, you want to push the chat or do you want me to push it out? Uh, I can push out the poll. Awesome. And I'm launching it again. Awesome. There right. you go. Awesome. All right. So we want to know where are you joining us from? If majority of folks are from Miami Beach, other cities in Florida, other cities in the US, outside of the country, or if you are in a parallel world, like Yanni, that is in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and how often do you present on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, rarely, or if you run, uh, run away from presentations? And what do you do before presenting, right? This is, this is a very exciting one. I think Michael and Julia are going to be covering that, right guys? Yep, yep. I love that yeah. portion. I get so excited every time. And I love to learn what people do. Um, so here we have some choices. And if your choice is not here, please throw in the chat. Let us know what you do before presenting. What, what is helpful to do before presenting? Oh, we should have put a meditating here. Yeah, we didn't put meditation. Oh, um, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good one, right? But we have Superman pose, jump and dance, listen to music, smile, practice in front of the mirror. So whatever we are saying you do in front of the mirror or you don't really do anything special for prep, let us know. And finally, if you consider yourself a rock star presenter, we might have rock stars, good presenters, eh, somewhat, or people that can never pass the message that they want. That happens a lot to me, guys, unfortunately. <laughs> and I'm terrible at presenting. So let's see where you are and where you stand. And Yanni, I don't know if you can see the, um, the percentages there. Yeah, we have about 77% of people have voted so far. Okay, so let's give another minute. And here we already have some questions, already some answers. Pray. Oh, Jay, that's, that's pretty cool. And meditate, deep breathe, deep breathe. I love deep breathe. Pray as well. Um, dance moves before the meeting started were flipping awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We kind of practiced before, I have to say. 
Uh, and where do we vote? You guys vote on the pool. You guys are not able to see the pool? It should be a pop-up window. It pops up in front of your Zoom. Yeah, maybe check or maybe on the bottom of your screen, there, maybe there is a pool that you click on it um, and then you can see it. Make sure the technology works. I know, Brian, this is, this is so hard for us. All right, so Yenny, what do you think? Let's start sharing the pool. Let's start yeah. sharing the results. And sharing the results. Awesome. All right, so 41% from Miami Beach, 33% from other cities in Florida. Um, the majority of you guys do present on a monthly basis, about 46%. And a lot of you guys, 49%, don't do anything mm -hmm. special before presenting. Wow. Yeah, we can hopefully change that. We yeah, that. yeah, right? You got to change. Really, after what you guys are going to teach us today. I'm so excited. And 44% think that you guys are eh, somewhat presenters. Very few rock stars, 3% only. And 41% thinks that you guys are, you know, good, pretty good at presenting. So, all right. So hopefully that will change by the end of Sustina Cella. You guys will, you know, feel more confident with the tools that our panelists are going to be presenting here today. And uh, we'll keep on moving. Um, here we nice. go. And here, Yeni, all yours, housekeeping. Thank you. Okay, so for those of you who are joining us for the first time, um, I'm going to repeat our housekeeping rules that we um, go over every Sustina Chala. So uh, the new people here, you'll probably notice that you are both muted and your videos have been disabled. This is to prevent any kind of funny business like Zoom bombing. Um, and if you ever have a question throughout the, throughout the presentation or throughout the workshop, we recommend that you please use the Q&A box. This way your question isn't lost within the chat. And if you do plan to use the chat, which we highly encourage, um, please make sure that you share your comments with the entire group. So uh, check off um, either everyone or all panelists and attendees whenever you send out your messages. And so for this month, we have a couple of different workshops. We have uh, about one Susana Cella per week. Our next one is actually on the 17th. And we're going to cover boat safety with our um, the great gentlemen over Red Marine Patrol, and they're also going to speak on uh, mini lobster season. I believe we have a special guest from the University of Miami who's going to join us. Yeah, um, Manoj Shivlani. Yeah, yes, thank you. And to cover uh, a little bit of what mini lobster season means and, um, you know, just to how, how to carry it out safely. So we're looking forward to seeing you all again next time. Yeah, coming soon this Friday, guys. All right, and finally, introducing our friends, our panelists today. And we have here with us, Dr. Michael Shank with CNA ACA. Hello, 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 hello. Nice to see everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Michael. And Julia Peake with USDN. Hello, everybody. Great to meet y'all today. All right. So guys, I'm going to start moving towards your presentation. And you guys know how it works. You guys have to keep telling me, next slide, next slide. And yeah, be patient with me because <laughs> we'll get it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Flavia, Yanni, the whole Miami Beach crew. Michael and I love you guys so much. Um, huge hello to everyone here. Looks like we've got a ton of people on Zoom. I know we've got people on Facebook. So hello to all of you. We really look forward to chatting with you today and getting to know you all a little bit. We are indeed gonna be using the chat box. So for y'all on Zoom, get ready, loosen up those fingers, maybe do some stretches, because we are gonna be asking you some questions. Um, awesome, I like your moves, Flavia. And uh, we are going to be presenting a, a sampling, a platter, a, a charcuterie board, if you will, of communications, tips, and tricks. We're gonna talk a little bit about presenting, as Flavia mentioned. We're gonna talk a little, just a teeny little like big jam worth of social media. We're gonna be talking a little bit about uh, how we can encourage people to engage in more sustainable behaviors because that's really what Michael and I do. We do a lot of work on public speaking. We do a lot of workshops, trainings. And we also do a lot of work helping people connect more with others whether you're talking about how to 
um, do more sustainable individual behavior, or you're talking to whole big groups of people or running campaigns. So we're going to just like dabble a little bit here and there on all of these topics and uh, feel free along the way, like Yanni said, ask questions like she'll be flagging those for us throughout the presentation. This is not a time where we need to just talk at you. So if you have a question, boom, put it in that chat in the Q&A box and we will get to you. Um, we're also going to be asking some like hand questions. I know you got like a little raise your hand function there. So I'm just curious. We saw the poll. It looks like a lot of you do like monthly ish public speaking. You feel okay about it. I'm curious how many of you, and you can just click the raise hand thing, how many people enjoy public speaking? Like, actually, kind of like it. I guess it kind of depends to who you're speaking to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, is that sustain a challenge that commission meeting? Mm. <laughs> different, different. How many hands up have we got, Yanni? I can't see it on here. We have about 17 now. 20? 17, 20. Okay, okay. And we got some folks in the chat. Awesome. Yeah, for those of you who don't have the chat box open, you can also open that if you want, because I'll be putting the questions in there if you'd prefer to read them instead. Next question. Yeah, it definitely depends on the audience. How many people does it make super nervous? You're just like, you can already feel your palms sweating as we talk about it. And you're like, I don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> like, me. Red me. sheets and all. Totally get it. No. Yes. 25%. <laughs> Love it. Okay. One other question. So curious, how many of you right now, oh, actually, before I move on, Yanni, how many, uh, how many hands up have we got for nervous? So we had uh, about 24. For nervous, okay. Yeah. More nervous than enjoying. How many of you, especially now, with everything happening in the world, how many of you are falling into social media holes? And by that, I mean, you click on one thing or you start scrolling and the scroll never stops, it just never stops. You've turned into a, a hamster wheel of scroll. TikTok, yeah, I, I, I see a it's lot so of that. Real. It's so real. It's, it's, yeah. It's so hard to concentrate. <laughs> yep. Yanni, how many hands up have we got on that? So we had about 29. Cool. All right. And last question, shiny object, yes. <laughs> shiny, my favorite color. Um, last question, how many of you wish you knew ways to encourage people to become more sustainable? Or really, if not more sustainable, just in general, like encouraging people, including yourself, to change your behavior to something that would be a little bit more constructive for you? Do you ever get stuck on that? How do you change your habits? Yeah. Yes. Cool. How many hands have we got on that one, Yanni? We had about 38. 38. All right. All right. So we got some heat. We got some heat. Cool. So I think this will be a tasty little app platter for all of you today. Or. Sure. Um, and really appreciate this and i love the action on the hands in the chat let's like keep that heat going and i'm going to kick it over to michael for the next slide next slide, next slide. Right. voice and body so anyone who's a runner out there what do you do before you go running you stretch out your thighs you stretch out your calves you stretch out your quads you stretch out your body before you run similar to presenting you need to stretch out your body. With presenting, I saw 49% of you don't do anything or don't really prep for presenting. Hopefully we change that percentage going forward because we want to impress upon you that it is absolutely essential to warm this up before you use it because throw a little nerves in here and then you start tripping up. 
maybe you have a multisyllabic word and you haven't warmed this up and then you got some nerves and you're like, oh, I just botched the anthropogenic multisyllabic word that I was supposed to deliver. So we're going to run through some warm ups that we normally do in person with people and Flavia and Yanni know this well, and they love these. They were hoping we'd use some. So I'm not going to stand up. Normally I'm standing when I'm doing this. I'm just going to do it in my chair. It's probably going to look funny. I'm going to look stupid and that's okay. And Yanni and Flavia and Julia will join me in this because they know it well. So, and, and sorry, I would encourage folks at home to follow along. Oh, that's assumed. I just I mean, assumed. I we just can't assumed. see you, but like. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. Do it. Do it. Because it's going to feel good. It's going to feel good. It's going to feel great. It's going to loosen you up. You're going to be ready for your day. Oh, and not only that, folks that are in the office as well, please. It is. Voice primarily comes from this region right here. This is my voice. But in fact, I'm going to stand up. It comes from down here too. And that's actually where your breath comes from and thus where your voice comes from. So the first thing we're going to do is a wow or a zoo that is based in our belly. And the only way to really get to the deep wow or zoo is with a big breath, and I'll show you how. And the lowest possible wow or zoo, and we can just shake out first before we do it. Just shake out any stress you have. <laughs> just shake it out, shake it out, shake, 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 because we hold a lot of stress up here and that gets in the way of our presentation. So the first one is like this. I'm gonna take a big breath and then I'm gonna do a wow or a zoo. You can do whatever you want. That's good. If you ever have to give a presentation where maybe you have to tell an emotional story, warm the belly up because that's where we often hold our emotions. You're more likely to be able to be vulnerable as a speaker and maybe go there emotionally when you're presenting if you warm up that belly. Otherwise, it might just be held here and constrained as a result. Rib cage, we hold a lot of tension throughout our cartilage, so we want to warm that up. Now, it's a little easier for those of you who are not on video to do this and do it discreetly. So find, a, find an appropriate place and time to do it. I often do it, do warm ups in the shower because your body is warming up and it's a good place to do it. But I'll show you, big breath, shaw, a nice, a nice gentle shaw. So this is warming up the cartilage between your rib cage so that when you speak, you're speaking as fully as you can through every part of your body. If we had more time, we could lie down, do meditation, warm up our legs too, because you can speak through all parts of your body. We're just doing the torso for now. Okay, next one is fun because you look silly doing it. We hold a lot of tension here in our jaw. So we're gonna liberate our jaw from our tension. First way to do it, you brace yourself and you shake. <laughs> a, less, a less violent way of doing it is just to massage the jaw and liberate it this way. Okay. Take the tip of your tongue, put it behind the bottom teeth, and it's as if there's a string in the middle of your tongue, you're gonna liberate your tongue that way. And I'll, I'll show you, and again, apologies. This, I brushed my teeth this morning, but this looks weird. <laughs> the reason we do that, again, nerves will trip up our tongue. And so we wanna warm up this so that we deliver everything as perfectly as we can. Follow me with a simple vibration of the lips. Good. I don't know if I can keep that tone, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> if we had more time, I would teach you some tongue twisters that I often do before I warm up. I'll just show you an example. You probably have your own. Betty bought, bought some butter, but she said this butter is bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. So she bought some better butter, better than her bitter butter, and it made her bitter batter better. And then I do it faster and faster and faster and faster just to warm this up. Another one, and this is helpful for people who uh, get stuffed up or have allergies or who get a cold, that is never an excuse. Sometimes you have to present and you have that. How do you liberate this from the stuffed up very easily? 
I'll show you a mini me me mama. So you take a big breath. Good. One more time. Good, good. Make your face really big and really small. Scrunch it up. Really big, really small. Scrunch it up. Good, 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 good. Now we're going to do one more thing. It's going to sound really loud, so maybe turn your volume down. But I'm going to do a re through the top of my skull, and I'm going to follow it all the way back down my system that I've warmed up. I'll do an example. Flavia, Yanni, and Julia know this well. But take a big breath so I don't want to hurt this. One breath, okay, ready? Big breath. Good, hopefully this is warmed up. Shake it out one more time. All right, nice job, everyone, nice job. Over to you, Julia, for a power pose. Power pose. Power pose. Actually, you know what? I, I, Michael, would you mind? Would you mind? I just, I love our little like um, sustainability riddle here, tongue twister. And I just would love to know if the folks at home can follow along. Oh, the weather, the weather bee? Yeah. Do you want to see? So I know normally we would do this and we would be able to hear you because it would be call and response. But let's just, if you can at home, try to follow along with us. Okay. So you'll repeat after me whether the weather be cold. Whether the weather be cold, be cold, or whether the weather be hot, or whether the, whether weather, the weather be hot, we'll be together whatever the weather. We'll be together, together whatever the weather. Whatever. The weather, weather. <laughs> whether we like it or not. Whether we like, we like it or not. Very good climate climate relevant riddle. Whether the weather be cold. Whether the weather, weather be cold. Or whether the weather be hot. Or whether, or whether the, weather, the weather be hot. We'll be together whatever the weather. We'll, we'll be together, together. Whatever, whatever the weather. Whether we like it or not. Whether we whether like, it like it or not. So you do that faster and faster and faster. Whether the weather be cold, whether the weather be hot, we'll be together, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. And it just warms this up. It's really good. I'm just curious if anyone managed to um, get that down, feel free to let us know in the chat. It's a good one. I do that one a lot. Um, yeah, just good. Warm, up, warm this up, warm this up. Um, okay, quick into power pose. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen this um research on power poses so this idea that actually standing like this if i were standing like with the victory whoo standing like this for five minutes can actually help increase your confidence there's a whole ted talk it's like one of the most power one of the most popular ted talks on there woman did all this research like this feel free too. to look it up but the point is you can do this you can do this, the superhero pose. You gotta imagine the cape. I think imagining the cape flowing helps, unless you're of the no capes persuasion. Capes can be dangerous. Again, I refer you to the Incredibles if you don't know why. Um, uh, and, but there's all kinds of other things you can do. You can do this, you can do this. You can do a cool like look in the mirror, put your sunglasses on slowly. <laughs> Turn away. We actually know someone who does that. Yeah. We know someone who does a model double take. Oh, hey, yo. Every time they get ready. There's all kinds of fun, funky, weird nice, fun Flavia. stuff you can do. <laughs> nice flash of the hair, Flavia. That was Love great. It. Yeah, you can do the hair toss. <laughs> you can do whatever it is you want. But the idea is what can you do to get in your body, get some confidence, be loose, be ready and able to present to folks. So we're just curious. I know most of you said you didn't have any routine before public speaking, but we're gonna just ask again, given all the things that we just talked about, could be a favorite pump up song, could be a funny thing you do with your glasses in the morning, could be a dance move, it can be jumping jacks. Sometimes when I'm really tired, I full on do high knees and jumping jacks. I'm like, I gotta wake up. Oh, and when Julia and I pump each other up, like because when we facilitate together, when we facilitate workshops, we're like, oh, 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 oh. and we go, woo, and we do these really big, obnoxious high fives. Yeah, and his hands are huge, so they just they, they me, but they're it's All fun. Right. 
It's okay. It's a, it's a powerful high five. It is. So feel free to put in the chat. Does anyone have, even if it's just a small, small thing that you do, even if it's just like you call someone up or you're like, give a high five to your colleague, thinking about like school presentations, any little tricks or tips anyone wants to share? Something fun that you do? Ooh, I, Eye of the Tiger is my <laughs> I love it. Ooh, love that. Yeah. With jumping around and dancing, yes. I'm just reading this off for the folks on Facebook if you can't see the chat. And somebody asked about the TED Talk on Power Pose. Just Google TED Talk Power Pose, you'll find it. Occasional jumping jacks, short walk. You are your own hype man, mm-hmm. True. Awesome. Here's from Michelle Rodriguez right there. I love, Wendy, I love the visualizing. You know, visualization, we're not talking about that today, but that is one of the key top ways that you can warm yourself up. Just imagine the whole thing going perfectly well, just how you want, and imagine everyone loving it. That's fantastic. And that's what athletes do too. Before we move on to the next thing, I do just want to throw out there that it's funny because we often just expect ourselves to be good at presenting and good at public speaking, but we don't practice. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make any sense, right? Like it's a skill just like anything else. You know, the best athletes in the world still go to practice. Like they don't just quit practicing and showing up. They practice actually most of the time, right? And they train most of the time for what, a one hour game, a two hour game or match. So it's really good to remember that like practicing really helps, warming up really helps, getting excited about this stuff, supporting each other, because that's the only way that we can really get good at this thing. Uh, Cause it's hard, right? Especially if it just doesn't come naturally, it's hard. Before I used to do TV interviews, I would practice in front of the microwave because the microwave represented this vacuous box that I would have to look into when doing a TV interview. So I would rehearse in front of the microwave and that would help prepare me for the, the vacuous uh, studio satellite interview when I had to look into a camera. So practice, practice, practice. Totally. Awesome. Let's Next slide. On. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna show you some bad ways to use Zoom, and I'm just uh, exemplifying here a couple bad ways that you don't want to use Zoom because this is really distracting. Oh, uh, so is this? Hey, am I on camera? Does anyone uh, does anyone see me? Am, am, is this working? Is this working? Or even the worst one, where like I'm talking. So You're classic. Right that always happens. <laughs> so classic. And sustainable. Always. <laughs> yeah. So you get the point. Thank you, Michael. That was an excellent, excellent demonstration. And here, of course, we have a we have a, a recent SNL skit on this. I welcome all of you to view this if you That's haven't. Funny. It's really also, good. Classic in the very beginning of much of the uh, quarantining around the country, we had the potato boss episode. Again, um, classic, classic Zoom moment, accidentally using a filter, can't figure out how to get it off. You're a boss looking like a potato. Uh, also, welcome you to Google this if you like the full potato boss story. I find it extremely entertaining. Um, so I'm just curious, and you can just either, again, raise your hands or type in the chat box. How many of you are on Zoom or another like video chat thing a lot right now? How many of you are spending a lot of time looking at people in tiny squares on the computer? I know I am. I feel like it's my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do. Today. <laughs> And Yanni, how many hands have we got up? We had 34. 34, 99% of my time, 90%, 25%. We got Google Meetups, we got FaceTime, we got Microsoft Teams, we got Zoom, we got GoToMeeting. It's all very exciting. It's not, it's not, it's not great. So I'm gonna just do a little, we're gonna do a little activity, a little Zoom-based activity here, just for fun real quick in the chat, okay? Uh, we're going to ask a few questions and just jot down your answers quickly. Okay. Just a word, a couple words, a phrase, don't overthink it, but don't hit enter. Just write it in the chat. 
And then I'm going to count down and we're going to all hit enter at the same time. It's going to be so suspenseful, you guys. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> this is how you build excitement on Zoom. Are you ready for this? Question number one. One thing I like about Zoom is, I'm going to give you like 15 seconds. Just jot a little something down in the chat. Don't click enter yet. That's really funny. Make Maybe. sure to click all panelists and attendees. I'm seeing some people just send it to the panelists. And three, two, one, everyone hit enter. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't even worry about what people wrote yet. We are all ready on the next question. One thing I wish were better on Zoom is Gonna give you about 10 seconds. Three, two, one, enter. Amazing. And the last question, one pro tip I have for being on video a lot is so if you have a particular tip, a particular way that you make this better for you. In three, two, one. If you guys want to give tip for editing sustainability, please do, guys. Awesome. <laughs> we need that too. <laughs> okay. So this was a little exercise that is sometimes called mad tea but it's just a little exercise lots of people do on Zoom um, to let everybody actually be able to get warmed up and talk to each other all at the same time. So what you can do now, I invite you all to even just scroll up and see what people said. Like what are some of these pro tips, for instance? We got background, doing phone calls. We're gonna talk about that. Natural lighting, taking screen breaks, just have a little scroll. Oh, wearing lipstick. I've started that. I'm a Zoom lipstick girl now. It helps. It makes me feel more festive. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, wear lipstick more now than I ever did before. Very funny. Um, you can mascara too. Bring out my eye. <laughs> you want to pop. pop, Michael. You've got yeah, those nice eyes. Um, so feel free to scroll up and just see what people said. We got connection. It can be hard to talk. Yep, getting your hair right. Tiredness on the screen can be hard to feel connected. Um, and then on the other hand, Zoom is great because we can have more connectivity in a way, right? Like we can talk to people all over the country more easily. So this was a, a fun way, just as you're doing your meetings or your workshops or your classes or your whatever it is that you're doing, using the chat is a fun way to let everybody speak about something it can be fun it could be serious and then if this were like a full-on workshop where i could hear all of you i would say okay are there any themes that popped out to folks and then we could talk about a couple themes we could even then break out into small groups and we could discuss some of those top themes and what we learned from each other it's a great way because I can't, like if Michael starts speaking, Flavia starts, blah, 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 blah. it's like we can't, only one person can speak on Zoom at a time. So using the chat is a really fun way to actually hear from everybody. Um, and then obviously this whole timing thing and seeing all the responses at once is like very suspenseful, very exciting. I know you liked it. The first time all the responses, I know, I know it was fun, even if you don't want to admit it. All right. We love it. We are stealing that for sustain a challenge with that, just FYI. <laughs> yes. So just a quick, a few quick little tips and tricks here. I just popped in the, in the chat. These are just scratching the surface. But first of all, to someone's point earlier, using the phone, not everything has to be Zoom. We still have phones. We can talk on the phone and then you can walk around and you can be outside. Like you don't always have to do Zoom just because you have it. You can also, I give permission, um, give people permission to not always stare at the camera. Like, I don't have to be staring at you like this the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, if we were in person and Flavia's talking to me, if I'm like looking like this for a minute, Flavia's not thinking, why isn't she staring deep into my eyes? She's thinking, 
that's, that's normal. She's listening. So you can do the same thing. Like it's okay to like be listening and look, look this way, give your eyes a break and then look back. Totally fine. Uh, take a break. If you can every hour or so, especially if you're doing like long things, take a break. Use breakout rooms, like we were saying, there's a whole cool function where you can all be in different rooms, having conversations, working on things, working on Google Docs, and you can come back together and talk. And then like we just did, using the chat box, really, really helpful uh, to get responses from everyone and hear from everyone at the same time. So those are just a few ways when you combine that with the presentation stuff, everything can just be a little bit more interesting and a little bit more fun for you and for everybody else. Just add one more thing on the chat box, chat box function. When I give presentations, I have my colleague, Michael Batista, handle the chat box. He is the moderator of the chat box. And so he'll surface questions that are coming up or themes that are coming up. So I can still do my presentation, not be distracted by the chat box, and Michael Batista can kind of surface some of the questions or themes that are emerging. So if you do have to give a presentation, you don't want to be distracted by the chat box, have a colleague, have a friend monitor that and then tag team so that they can be the moderator of the chat box, you can be the presenter. Totally, and like right now, Flavia is clicking the slides, I'm putting things in the chat box, and Yanni is keeping an, uh, an eye on Q&A. So this is like, yeah. go team, go team. Go team, go team. Okay, let's talk about social media briefly. Unless, are there any questions, we're like halfway through, any like burning questions we should get into? Or should we move um, on? We actually have one here. Yeah. Uh, what has been your biggest lessons learned in your journey of public speaking? Ooh. Whoa. Oh. I'll, I'll offer one, and I'm curious, Julius. Mine is that I'm always practicing. I've never felt like I finally arrived. And I've been on the stage since I was a kid. Uh, and definitely on the stage in my early 20s and then continuing to present up until my 40s. So I feel like I'm always trying to improve. I'm often screwing up. And I hope by the time I'm 70 or 80, maybe I've perfected the art, but it is a constant rehearsal. So just give, forgive, forgive yourself in that way that it's not like a perfection that you will find at a certain time. It's just, it's an ongoing process. Yeah, I would definitely agree with Michael there, I think. Um, always practicing, always learning, mm -hmm. um, always learning from other people too. Like when I'm really excited or interested and I, I love what's happening when I'm hearing someone speak, I think like, oh, what can I learn from them? Like, that's really neat. But also at the same time, staying really true to myself. Like I am who I am. Like I'm kind of, I'm, you know, as my dad used to tell me, you're just stuck with who you are. <laughs> <laughs> like a very dad thing to say, right? Um, Sorry, honey. <laughs> it's good to just, it's like, I, you know, I, I talk with my hands and I'm, you know, I'm less formal, right? Sometimes I have a couple colleagues who are these incredible presenters, but, and they're very polished and they're very formal. And sometimes I wish I were like that. I'm just not, I'm a little bit more extroverted off the cuff and that's okay. Like knowing what your strengths are really helps and being true to who you are, you don't have to change because the minute you are really trying to become someone else is gonna be a lot harder, right? So practicing and honing your gifts, your talents, what you can bring to the stage is I think really important and really helpful and just embrace that. And you can always grow, right? You can always grow in lots of directions, but at the end of the day, like you are who you are. So. Be okay with that, be comfortable with that. I'll just uh, add a quick answer to a question that came up, which I think is really important, how to read your audience. So we recommend getting rid of all the barriers between you as the presenter and the audience as the receiver. Mm -hmm. If there's a pulpit, my dad was a preacher, so I think pulpit, if there's a podium, if there's a table, anything that's gonna get in the way of your ability to connect with the audience, get rid of it, walk around it, go into the audience. If you have to give a presentation, know beforehand if there's a roving mic or a cordless mic or a lapel mic so that you can engage with the audience, you can interact with them. It, it ensures that they stay active with you because a lot of presenters do stay behind the podium, but if you get rid of that podium, if you walk around the audience, they're gonna be much more attuned to what you're gonna talk about. And the, I told, so 100% agree with everything Michael just said. And then also, I think, you want to definitely be reading your audience and you want to be catching the vibe, but you also don't want to assume 
that just because someone isn't like giving the facial expression that maybe you would be, um, that you would give of being interested doesn't mean that they're not. Because I've definitely had the experience of thinking like, oh, this person's not into it. And then afterwards they'll come up and be like, that was incredible. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. So read your audience, right? Be, be drawing people out, be really trying to connect with everyone. And also don't get in your head if it doesn't seem like someone is super pumped because they really might be, right? You don't know them. So you want to try to connect and read people, but you also want to like know that you don't know what's happening in someone's head. So you don't want that to like derail you from your game. So we're going to, we're going to keep going because we have yeah. a couple more slides that we want to address in terms of our coverage. And that conversation could continue for a long time because there are a lot of important dynamics there. Sustainable social media. So Julie and I both have degrees in the conflict space. Uh, that's actually how we first met. She got her master's where I got my PhD in conflict resolution. We're seeing this come up a lot on social media and I know you know what we're talking about. This year has been a lot of contention, a lot of conflict coming up on social media and people try to transform that conflict through engagement, whether it's around racism, systemic racism, whether it's around how to respond to COVID, should we wear masks, should we not wear masks? And we're seeing a lot of conversations gone bad. And so what we just very want to we want to quickly identify here, we don't need to spend a lot of time on this. If you are trying to transform the thinking of a colleague or a friend or a family member around a really contentious topic, right, systemic racism or how to respond to pandemics, we encourage you to take it offline. And I'll give an example where my brother was trying to confront a cousin who had posted some pretty racist stuff. And my brother rightly suggested that they meet up offline, either on a phone call or grabbing a drink. Uh, this was down in Virginia, somewhere socially distanced, but something offline where they could at least either be face-to-face -face or voice-to-voice. -voice. And the likelihood of a transformation happening in that conversation is much higher than it ever happening online virtually. So we just, we just wanna identify this space because it's really important going forward because we're going to be in this space for a long time that if you really care about the relationship find a way to take it offline so that uh, you can either be voice to voice or face to face because it's much more difficult to be mean when you're face to face it's much easier to be mean virtually and i just keep seeing lots of threads go bad when had they been taken offline where there's more of a relationship either face to face or voice to voice the opportunity for transformation is greater. Julia, did you have anything you wanted to add on this slide? Um, no, except for uh, urging you all to not doom scroll. Yeah, it's a great definition. <laughs> um, as, as much as possible, I have found myself periodically getting into doom scrolling. And um, it's really where, you know, you're just scrolling. You're just scrolling. You're doom scroller, yeah. Bad. You keep scrolling. You're almost like, yeah, it's not great. Um, so, so use use social media, right? Get keep informed, obviously. Like, be engaged, and just for your own personal sustainability, is just like a little gentle, cheeky reminder that it's also important for all of us to take care of our mental health right now, so that we can engage with people in a really productive, healthy way. Um, but if you spend three hours scrolling on social media, like it might not. Um, go super well for you. So also I just love the term doom scrolling. It's, yeah, it's a great term. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. So we're going to talk about behaviors. Um, and before Michael dives into this, I just want to say it's hard to change our habits, right? Like how many of you quick show of hands, how many of you find it hard to change your habits? Like their habits, right? We have a million little silly proverbs about how habits die hard, et cetera, et cetera. So um, before Michael dives into this, I just want to acknowledge like, you know, it's really, it's hard for us to change our habits. It's hard for everyone. And so we really need to help each other make it easier. So when we, you know, and Michael and I in our work, when we're helping folks with uh, becoming more sustainable and living more sustainable lives and building more sustainable cities and towns and all that. We're always about like acknowledging that it's difficult and let's make it easy. Let's make mm -hmm. it as easy as we can and really help each other out. So Michael. Here are three tips 
to make that behavior change a little easier for friends, family, colleagues, coworkers, you name it. This is not exhaustive. If you go to ideas42.org, ideas42.org, I-D-E-A-S, the number four, the number two, .org, you'll see all of these behavior change principles spelled out. This is just three. From left to right, we're gonna talk about status quo bias on the left. In the middle is around social norming. That's what we'll talk about in the middle there, social norming. And on the right, choice overload. So first, on the left, status quo bias. We prefer the status quo. We prefer to stay in our lane, to stay in the same lane we've always been driving, we've always been walking, we've always been doing. Getting out of that lane takes some work. And so when you think about trying to convince your friends, families, colleagues, coworkers to do things like consider an electric vehicle or consider solar or consider energy efficiency measures or a heat pump. Or, or eat more or, plants. Or eating more plants, thank you. Or sustainable clothes that are made with organic fibers and made locally. Or wearing a mask. How do you get people to change their behavior ever so slightly? So we have to make it easy for them. So whatever the on-ramp is to that different lane, it has to be easy. So when you think about communicating electric vehicles, eating plants, heat pumps, solar power, is it gonna be affordable? Is it gonna be easy to access? Do they know how to get a contractor to do it? How do we make it easy for them? And then how do we always incentivize with, and Julie will talk to this in a second, basic human needs appeals, which make life better. So if we're going to ask them to change their lane, we have to convince them simultaneously that life is going to be better. Otherwise, why change the lane? Why is life going to be better? Why is my health going to be better? Why is my pocketbook going to be better? Why is anything going to be better if I change this lane? We'll talk about that in, in a subsequent conversation on the next slide. But I just want to identify that if you are asking someone to change your lane, let's make it as easy as possible. Let's appeal to basic human needs around financial security, health security, safety, et cetera, but also the quality of life is gonna be much better. Okay, the one in the middle, social norming. The data show that if your neighbor is doing something, you're more likely to do the thing your neighbor is doing. If your neighbor has solar panels, you're more likely to get solar panels. If your neighbor is saving money on their energy bill because they have all these energy efficiency measures, you're gonna be incentivized to save more money than your neighbor is saving. So when you think about the power of social norming. No one wants to, generally speaking, no one wants to stand out in the crowd. No one wants to be that different. When 99% of a community is doing something, it's very hard for someone to be that 1% outlier. People want to be a part of the community. So how do we build a movement, share the activities that we're doing where we're going green so that other people are like, oh, I want to be a part of that movement. Something Julie and I have talked to the city of Miami Beach about is, when you build your website, when you're communicating out green behaviors that are happening all across the city of Miami Beach, show that a movement is happening so people are socially normed and like, oh, I want to be a part of that movement. I want to do what everyone else is doing. So think about reflecting back. We'll talk about that in the next slide. A campaign that shows all this incredible movement that, that is happening. And lastly, on the far right, there are so many green behaviors that people could do, so much that we could do, and people are often overwhelmed by the litany of things that we can and should do to go green, to save the planet, to save society before we die in 30 years. Don't overwhelm them. Give them, give them one task, give them one opportunity, give them one ask. They get their foot in the door on that, they're like, oh, I like this, life is better. You asked me to change lanes, I did change lanes, and life is better in the following ways. You reel them in, you got them on one thing, all right. Jane, Joe, you like that? Let me give you another, versus, hey, here's a list of 12 things you need to do today to go green. And the person's like, no, no, too much. Choice overload. Give them one thing at a time. Julia, that was a quick overview of these three things. Ideas42.org for more. Julia, did I miss anything in any of those three? Um, no, I thought that was great. The only thing I would add is that with the social norm piece, like we all, like nobody, nobody wants to, like we don't want to think of ourselves as followers. But, but we kind of are, and like, so it's okay. And just like, people wanna be part of stuff. So being like, like I, I love, you know, bringing like your friend, bringing a straw out, like a reusable straw, like 
more people at the table want the straw. That's great. Like one step at a time, showing that people are doing it, like you are not alone. We constantly underestimate, like we constantly think we're more alone than we are. It's really interesting. The research shows this too. It's like, oh, nobody else thinks that. And it's like, actually lots of people think that or lots of people are doing this thing. So showing people and really helping people like, hey man, you're not alone. Like I'm doing this, all these people are doing this really, really helps. So we're just curious real fast if anyone wants to just offer up either a new sustainable behavior that you've adopted this year, something new you're trying, maybe it's straws, maybe it's walking to a place you used to drive, uh, maybe it's going to the farmer's market more often, who knows. Um, or if there's one new sustainable, sustainable behavior that you would like to try, um, but you haven't yet. Good job, Daphne, going vegan. I love it. Vegan, switching to an EV. Working out at home. And as you're making these behavior changes, be right. an evangelist, be a, be a witness to it. Sorry for the religious terms again. My father was a preacher, so I grew up in the church. But share how life is better with people around you, whether it's plant-based diets, whether it's EVs, whether it's solar, whether it's heat pump, whether it's the clothes you're wearing, share the good news of how life is different, how life is better. Awesome, love seeing all of this, planting gardens, reusable bags, buying clothes at Goodwill versus Macy's, working remotely, reducing, reducing waste and single-use plastic, solar, not yet, yeah, trying not to let any food go to waste. These are all awesome, you all. Thank you so much. Sustain the cella. Love that. <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> all right. All right. So our last little piece here that we're going to talk about, and you can go to the next slide, Flavia. And before I move to the next slide, uh, Judah, they have a question here for you. What is the best way to handle a strong disagreement or an attack raised by an audience member, whether on Zoom or in an in-person presentation? I'll, I'll take a first stab at that. So Julie and I uh, strongly believe in a, the Aikido form of handling conflict. So you don't want to run from it. You also don't want to box with it. You want to embrace it and transform it. So in person, we would welcome it and embrace it and also transform it. So sometimes if the person isn't doing the transformation with you and you're trying to transform that energy, uh, it's appropriate to put a placeholder and take it offline and not ignore it, but say that we're gonna find a safe place to continue to talk about this. Or if it's something large enough, sometimes it will redirect the whole conversation. I often rely on the whole group to make a decision in that moment too. Again, socially norming where the conversation should go. And I'm fine letting go of an, of an agenda if this is such a weighty conversation that the group does need to address it right now but i turn to the group often for that same with online that hasn't come up for me yet in the covid space in terms of real contentious issues online but i would probably try the same thing embrace it address it try to transform it rely on the group to social norm it um, but make making sure i don't either ignore it or box it so it's really a an embrace and transform julia do you have addition yeah, no, the only other thing I would, I would say about that is, especially now on Zoom, um, when I've run some, some workshops and conversations that certainly had the potential to be quite um, intense uh, or emotional for folks, um, a, a big part of that is actually heading it off from happening by how you structure the conversation. So having agreements that everyone makes in the beginning actually really helps cut down on the likelihood of that happening. Because there's a thing that happens when we all agree about how we're gonna be together and how we're gonna have a conversation that creates this feeling of accountability, like, oh, I, I just agreed. And I will sometimes actually present agreements and ask people in the chat to say, like, I agree, or verbally to say that they agree to something. And then do that in a room too. Mm -hmm. And then structure it so that you don't have lots of just open space for people to just, you know, blurt out all of their feelings or all of their whatevers. Um, and having smaller structured spaces and structured questions and conversation usually helps people um, be in a be in the stay in the container that you're creating um it also just very much depends on the type of conversation you're having you know when i facilitate a conversation about 
um, you know, creative campaign engagement ideas, it's very different from facilitating a conversation about systemic racism. So I also very much plan for it based on that. And then how you decide to interrupt something or not, again, very much depends on exactly what it is that you're talking about and how you can also protect the other people that are in that room, you know, especially with a conversation, say, about race. So um, Nicole, appreciating that, uh, it's important to understand how your identity is perceived in a context. We're never neutral parties. And when Michael and I do a lot of training on just a full day training, say, on public speaking presentation, we actually talk a lot about that and do a whole exercise around how to understand who you are in a space and what that means to people and uh, how you can have those conversations in a good way. So we got five minutes left. We're not going to cover all of this, but we're going to, we're going to just like dip. Like I talked about how we have like a charcuterie platter here. So we're just going to like dip our crackers in a couple little dippings here um, before we go. And this is, I guess for Michael, this is a plant-based charcuterie platter. Sorry about that. <laughs> Michael's vegan. Um, okay. So boom, boom, sustainable communications. Couple quick things. We got messages, messengers, multiples, and me. Say it with me. Messages, messengers, multiples, and me. Michael has, I don't know, 20 of these or something, but these are four that are gonna be really helpful whether you're talking to your friends and family or you're a nonprofit running a campaign. So the first one, messages, is about actually meeting people where they are. So like, what do people care about? What's important to people? You know, and this is true whether you're like, you know, if we've got any kids on here, you're trying to convince your parents to like let you do something, you gotta know what's important to them, right? Same thing if you're a nonprofit and you're applying for a grant. Like what is important to people? Is it costs? Is it their health? Is it their kids or their grandkids' futures? Um, whatever it is, you wanna connect with that. You wanna connect with what's actually happening in their lives, right? And then you wanna also just pick a few things to focus on. Sometimes we wanna tell people everything about something. Like we're excited about something and we wanna give people all the information. Don't do that. It's people don't remember. Start with just a few key pieces. Again, like what's the most important part of what it is you're going to say? Focus on that. And then if people want more information, you can continue the conversation, but it's like an invitation. Top three messages. It opens the door. It starts the conversation. It gets people excited. So you want to start with that and where meeting people where they are using language that people understand rather than like your agenda, what you think is important and the words you like to use. Cause it's not about you, it's about the person you're talking to. And that's the key difference there. Uh, messengers, only quick thing I'm gonna say about that, that we all know sometimes who is saying something is more important than what is being said. I'm sure we've all had that experience. Like you're talking to a friend and you're just like, oh, like I can't tell her that she won't listen to me, but she'll listen to so-and-so, your other friend. We've all had this experience where someone telling you something, you're like, well, you don't really walk the talk, so I'm not gonna listen to you. So think about like, maybe you're not the best person to deliver a message. And this can be for something fun and low key, but it can also be for really important issues. Again, back to what we were just talking about, like I'm a white woman, so there's a limit to what I can know about the world, right? So I gotta be really conscious of that when I'm talking about um, say running a conversation on race, which is why it's really great when um, I can partner with a person of color, especially another black woman to be able to talk about that. So know who you are and know if you're not the best messenger. Michael? Last two M's and I put links in the chat to longer explanations of all the M's that Julie referred to that we've written on before. Multiples, repeat, 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 repeat. We think people are smart and are gonna hear us once and we'll take action. No, that's not gonna happen. Which is why advertisers saturate, saturate, saturate. So what does that mean for you? Let's say you're trying to convince a community to do something. Addressing all the communication channels, whether it's emails, phone calls, newspapers, TV ads, radio PSAs, downtown bulletin boards, Anything that they're looking at, you want to be in. If it's your friends or family, saying once, saying twice, not enough. Repeat, 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 repeat. And repeating in language that people use. Nothing too dense or multisyllabic for them so they can remember, remember it. May seem obvious, but a lot of people don't do it. Lastly, me, 
And again, check the chat for links for fuller explanations since we're running out of time. But walking the talk, it's so important in the sustainability space to walk the talk. I have recently taken on some new behaviors so that I can truly walk the talk, but also so I can see where the hiccups are. So I got heat pumps and power wall batteries that I lease through my utility and I have solar. And some of that costs me more than I would otherwise feel comfortable paying for, but in my work as a sustainable climate communicator, I have to make sure I'm walking the talk and struggling to do the things that I'm asking other people to do so I can see where the hiccups are in the system and where things need to be cheaper and more available, more accessible and easier to get. Uh, but I've, I've not eaten meat for 20 years, one, because I think it's important from a resource perspective, an animal rights perspective, but also in my ability to communicate about carbon light living I have to make sure I'm doing what I'm asking other people to do. Otherwise, they'll poke holes and they'll think I'm a hypocrite. So I have to constantly challenge myself on that front as well. More on that in the links we sent on chat. Uh, Julia, over to you. Do you want to do any kind of closing out on the thank yous? I mean, I mean, we had a bunch of questions, but we're like out of time because we all had such great questions from all of you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure getting to meet you all briefly. Amazing. So actually, guys, and you guys can hang out with us if you can. If not, I completely understand that you might have other commitments, but we still have Kahoot. So we are still doing that because otherwise, you know, people might murder me. If I don't do Kahoot. A lot of folks just join Sustainable Shell for Kahoot. So we are doing it, guys. Stick with us. We're doing Kahoot. Um, and before you guys go, there is only one more question. What is the best way to get the feel of who your audience is before the presentation? Yeah, ask as many questions as you can of the hosts, of the organizers before you get there. Who are the people? What do they want? What did they do that morning? What are they expecting? Where are they going with their work? As many questions as you can ask of the organizers or the hosts so you know where the audience is. is did they eat two hours ago? Are they hungry? Are they gonna to have to go to the bathroom? Is there a bathroom for them to use when they get to the space? All the questions, because you want that audience to be in a good mood, to be receptive to what you're gonna say. Uh, and if, if they haven't eaten, bring them food. And if they don't have water, bring them water. Things like that are really important to make sure the audience is primed to receive the message you wanna share. Well, and that's exactly what we did on this, right? Like we asked you a bunch of questions. Like Flavia, they had a poll. I asked you a bunch of questions in the chat. So you can even just ask people in a room, like how many of you enjoy presenting? People can raise their hands. So you can also ask people on the spot if you're comfortable with it, in addition to asking beforehand. And they feel empowered by it too. It's a good, it's a good device. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen right now. Yenis, it's all yours. And guys, I don't know if you guys want to hang out with us and watch Kahoot. Pretty exciting yeah. moment. Yeah. This is the moment that everybody has been waiting for. All right. We're getting okay. started, guys. Now we're going to see if you're really paying attention to this presentation. <laughs> So for those of you who haven't played Kahoot before, um, sorry. So for those of you who haven't played Kahoot before, go to the URL that you see up here, kahoot.it, on your phones and put in the code that you see here, 2776292. And we'll give everyone about a minute to join and then we'll get started. All right, and in the meanwhile, get it. In the meanwhile, if you guys have any questions to ask, please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A to take advantage that, you know, Michael and Julia are here. I know there were some early questions in the chat. So if you guys, you know, have any burning questions, this is the time, guys, while we wait to start Kahoot. And I will also pass to Julia and Michael. If you guys have any other tips or desires or call for action that you would like to call to actions that you would like to share with everyone attending Sustainable Challenge today. Well, I'll just reiterate the two links that I sent. And if for some reason you didn't see those links, if you go to carbonneutralcities.org, we have those links under our resources. It's basically a further explanation of some of those sustainable communication, sustainable campaigning tips that we talked about carbonneutralcities.org. Those are where I have the resources posted. Awesome. Uh, but just a super, super
super fan endorsement of the city of Miami Beach. Julie and I are huge fans of the city of Miami Beach. And we'll, we say yes to, pretty much to everything they ask. Okay, so be, be ready, because I just have another question for you. <laughs> you saw, right? They're asking for another session with Michael and Julia, and also a sustainability on conflict resolution. Oh my God, you just offer. <laughs> So, yeah, I'll be bugging you guys, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being a fan of the City of Miami Beach. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, Yanni, how are we doing there? You want to keep, us, keep yeah, on going? A good number of people, so I think we can get started now. So I hope everyone's ready. You find this awesome. Is the music so loud or is it good? You ready? Follow up questions. This Sunday. This, this. What is not necessary to warm up before making a presentation? We had one person put voice. They may have missed the first part of the presentation, but that's okay. So that's <laughs> and you can warm up your cat. <laughs> so at the top, we have EB, followed by Jay and her wig. Oh, look wig. at Jay. <laughs> <Top three. laughs> what should you not do on a Zoom call? Great <laughs> picture, you on Thanks. <laughs> My favorite Zoom call ever. Yep, walk and talk. I've seen a couple of people do that before. Yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. Nobody. nobody. <laughs> nobody Making me motion sick. <laughs> I know. Me too. So we have Jay at the top, and EB is now in second. Ooh, Jay and the <laughs> Go Jay, go Jay. What is doom scrolling? Doom scrolling. Doom scrolling. Doom scrolling. news someone put well two people put the writing of dead sea scrolls so that's interesting that's awesome <laughs> oh yeah, red red panda. Panda. Oh, what? What? <laughs> jay lost the first place all right next one which behavior changed focus did we not address something about this yeah thing. just go to ideas 42 to find out more and i wrote about it on carbonneutralcities.org so i won't explain it here but check it out find out more awesome thanks and i want to apologize ahead of time if anybody hears all the thunder in the background here there's a pretty bad storm in my area for some reason i thought you were in the clouds and like the <laughs> the clouds. it could be that too <laughs> oh so red panda <laughs> Next question, last one. What does not belong in sustainable communications? Nobody wants missives. Long, <laughs> long missives. No, keep it short. Short paragraphs, short sentences. So our winners are. Oh, drum roll. Come on. Mindy, 
You guys are amazing. As so fun always. to be with you. Thanks, everyone. Aww, love it. And um, yeah, have we to bring do have a lot back. of Q and A's, Flavia. I'm not sure if. Oh no, oh. that was that, no. I'm sorry, the chat box. I was looking at the wrong number. Disregard. No. So no. So no more questions. No, I don't see them. All right. So I want to thank our amazing panelists again, guys. Thank you so so mega much. We really appreciate all your dedication, putting together this amazing presentation, and staying with us until now. Um, and yes, folks are asking, that's how Sustainable works, you know, they tell us what to do and we go for it. So we'll have to bring you guys back. <laughs> so thanks again. Thanks for our team, Yanni, Michelle, Betsy, really, Amanda, really appreciate all of you guys. And thank you guys for participating. Thank you so much for joining thank another Sustainable. We really, really appreciate, um, you know, we have a, a coming up Sustainable this Friday about boating safety and mini lobster season it's about to start so it's gonna be get exciting ready. so make sure you show up yeah it's going to be lots of fun and um yeah if you guys do you guys have any other anything to share guys anybody here should i go to our much love and gratitude to everyone here thanks yanni thanks Bavia. thank you thank you both thank you guys you guys are amazing all right so guys, ha ending up this Monday Sustainable with love and gratitude. Again, thank you so much. Send you guys lots of love. And we'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Ciao, Bye. Ciao. Happy Bye. Monday. Bye.